Hey, Soloholics. Okay, so I'm going to work on the second video of this series that I'm doing on different knockout designs. I am getting back into the swing of things of making videos for YouTube, and I'm going to start to cre recreate a lot of the videos that I did previously that were with version three. I'm going to try and do them with version four. So we'll get a lot more videos within Soloholics Anonymous on Soloholics Anonymous, the YouTube channel, in the coming weeks. So I did a video for the regular knockout design. I will post that video link somewhere here on the video, or you can check the description box for the link to that video. In this one, I'm going to show you something that's more ideal, in my opinion, for heat transfer vinyl and also adhesive vinyl as well, because there is an outline, which gives you kind of a buffer or a little bit of leeway, a little bit of wiggle room, when it comes to lining things up and with heat transfer vinyl, because there is that shrinkage, it allows you to um, place it where you don't have to worry about it being right in line. And this gives you to where, you know, it's not going to be so noticeable if there is shrinkage in one part and not the other and they don't quite line up. It won't be as noticeable with something like this. I'm also going to show you a way of doing it to where you have um, just a very thin outline. And while that one works, I would not recommend that one so much for heat transfer vinyl unless you are layering it directly on top of vinyl. Then if you do it that way, then you shouldn't have a really big issue as far as um, the shrinkage being a problem because you're going to lay it directly on top. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and jump into this. As you can see, there are several different ways of doing it. This one we showed it um, in the beginning where you can separate it by uh, different colors. You can have it where it's just two colors. You can do this as one color, which as one color, it's going to pretty much look like this to where the image just seems like it's just burned into the letters. All right, so we're going to start with the same image that we had in the previous video, so nothing's going to change on that. I'm going to select, actually, what we want to do first for the outline is we're going to select my image and I'm going to put an offset on it. Now, the size of your offset is kind of a personal preference. You would determine how thick you want this line to be or how thin you want it to be. For the size that I have right here in front of me, I found that uh, 0 0.05 was pretty okay. Um, and where I didn't lose a lot of detail and things like that. So you have to decide based on how, like when you're designing it, if you're designing and let's say your, your, I'm going to go ahead and hit apply like this right here, you made it super, super big right now. We're at about like five inches tall and six wide. Let's say if I was doing this at the 12 by 12, the half inch may appear to be a little bit smaller. So you may want to go up to an inch. So the way that it looks is going to kind of be determined by the size that you are designing to. So for me, a half an inch worked pretty good. So I am going to go ahead and fill that in with color. I like to fill things in with color just to make it easier to select. Excuse me. And just so that I can visualize and see things. Just like with the previous video, you want to make sure that you take your text and you group them together. So if I ungroup because I type this all out and I guess I'll go through that um, just in case you don't watch that one with this one, it was just a matter of double clicking on it. Well, going here, you're going to go here to add your text box. I'm going to go caps unicorn. Then I'm going to click off click back on it so that I'm in selection mode and not text mode. If you are in text mode, you have to highlight the entire thing for the text to change. Then I'm going to come over here, select impact. Then I'm going to duplicate that by holding down control and my down arrow, hold down my shift and pull that a little bit closer, double click on it, highlight it all, or you can just go control a to select all. Then we're going to change that to love. And then we're going to stretch it out. And that kind of lines up. Hold down my shift key and bring that down. So that is how you would create the letters. And then, of course, you can select them both and resize them as you see fit. 
So I already have my letters here or my text here. For this design, you want to make sure that you select all of your text boxes and you group them together. That is because once you subtract, you will, how can I put it? Um, once you subtract, if they're not grouped together, it will subtract from basically the last layer. So one of the lines of text will end up disappearing depending on which one is furthest to the back. So you want to make sure that you take those and you group them together so that they're basically all on the same level. All right. Then we're going to select everything here and we're going to copy control C on a PC, command C on a Mac, or you can right click and choose copy. You're not going to do anything with that copy just yet. I'm going to now go over to modify and subtract. So it's going to take all of it away just like before. And we're going to control G group it all together. Or you can right click and choose group. If you're going to right click, make sure that your cursor is over one of the actual letters and not just in the open space because then you will deselect everything. Now we're going to control F or you can right click and choose paste in front. I do not need to use the offset part. So I'm going to hold down my shift key. I'm going to select the offset part that basically deselects it. Now I'm going to go to crop and I'm going to have just my image um, crop to the letters. So I'm going to go ahead and group that together. Control G. I'm going to click on that offset and I'm going to delete that. I no longer need it. So now I'm pretty much done with this to where I can do this from two colors and be able to line them up with my heat transfer vinyl and I don't have to worry so much about the shrinkage. I am going to do another video on alignment marks, which I like to call them. Most videos will call them registration, but I think that gets most people confused once they start to do print and cuts and there are registration marks in Silhouette Studio for that. So for those, I like to call them alignment marks and not so much registration. So this is pretty much done for doing it this way. All right, let's move this one off to the side. Control F, paste in front. And so with this one, I'm going to select the inner image, hold down my shift key, select the uh, offset, and I'm going to make them a compound path. So right click. Actually, before I do that, because I'm going to end up copying the one that has the compound path, I'm going to make a duplicate of this because I am going to need it. So I'm going to hold down my alt key, move this off to the side so that I have a clean copy of my original design. So now I'm going to click on here, hold down shift, click on the offset oops, and right click, make it a compound path or the keyboard shortcut is control E on a PC, command E on a Mac. I'm going to select here and I'm going to go to modify and I'm just going to subtract. This will give it to me to where it is just burned into the image. OK, so you can go ahead and cut this all in one color and the color of your shirt will show through in the other part. So you still have the offset of the unicorn. Um, to where you can tell that it's supposed to be there. Sometimes certain images, when it's super, super thin, it's not as ideal and you can't really see it as much. If you have something that's an outline and it's really thick lines, those tend to work best. The thin line ones can work, but you just don't see the definition as much, um, especially from far away. Like you really would have to get up on it to really see the separation and the definition. All right. So I'm going to move this one and make sure everything's grouped, move it off to the side, control F. Um, oh, well, I guess I did it, copy it uh, when I did the, what is that thing called? <laughs> Make compound path. So now I'm going to select it. I'm going to show you a different way of selecting those. Select everything, hold down shift, select the text. Now I have just the unicorn and the offset, control E to make it a compound path. Now I want to select them. I'm going to copy or control C. We're going to subtract and it's going to look just like the other image. Control G to group it together. Now control F to paste it in front 
and this time I'm going to crop. Control G, group that together. Okay, now with this one, the reason why I did it that way, now I could have gone and I'll show you a different way you can just do subtract all, but it's going to still leave the pieces in between the letters. We don't want to have that. So that's why you go and you crop it. Now with this one, you can have it where you can uh, cut this one. Like I said, this one I recommend more so like a printed design, um, whether you're doing a printed shirt or like maybe a sticker, a label, invitation, something like that. So you can do it that way. And I'm going to show you really quickly to where if we were to just hit subtract all, it looks like nothing has changed. However, I can move this out of the way and there is the cutout back there and then this one will sit on top and you have the pieces right here that still go like in the open area. So it doesn't look quite like this. You see right here and then right here, you'll see the difference there. All right, so that's how you would do that. And then on this one, I did forget to change the colors. So I'm going to come back to this one and just show you how to adjust the colors. So I'm going to zoom back in on this one. We're going to ungroup. And then I'm just going to click on all of the letters of parts of love for the bottom. Group those together. Go up here to my paint dropper. My, um, my fill tool, change those to a different color. Then I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go to the very, very top. So I select the tops of the letter. That way I don't have to go in and individually click through each one. Now I do have some areas that are not connected to it. So I'm going to hold down my shift key, select that piece and select that piece. And now let's go and change the color on those and control G group it together. Now for the horn, I'm going to drag from this side, come all the way down. So I did select the word unicorn, but I can just hold down my shift key, select the word unicorn because I have grouped that all together. Now control G to group that section together and fill that in. Now I can select um, pretty much everything else, hold down shift, select the love part, select the unicorn part, select the horn, now I have just the main part of the unicorn. Control G, group it together, and then let's change this one to a pink. And I'm gonna select everything, right click and remove the line color. So with that, I just wanted to show you how like easy ways to kind of group things together where you don't always have to hold down shift and click, especially if it's something that's gonna have really small pieces. Sometimes it's best to group together the chunkier pieces. That way when you you know group it with a chunkier piece, you can just select that whole one to deselect it, and then you'll have what's left behind is what you actually need to group or modify, change or anything like that. All right, so hope that helps guys as far as doing um, an outline. I'm gonna do one more on this because I didn't want to put too much into one video and that's gonna be on setting up the alignment marks for it. If you guys have questions, do not hesitate to post, post them uh, below in the comment section, whether you're watching this on YouTube or um, in one of the Facebook forms. If you are not a member of my Facebook group, the link for that will be in the description box. If you have any questions or video requests, feel free to email me. My email will also be in the description box. And if I have time, if I'm able to get around to it, it's something that I can do and I'm maybe I don't already have a class on it or a video on it, I'll be more than happy to do that video for you as well. But I do have quite a few videos. Um, go ahead, click on the main channel, click on videos and you're going to see that there are there's a wide variety of videos there. You can also utilize the search box by typing in Sillaholics Anonymous and then put a few keywords or just a keyword or a few keywords in to see if a video, uh, a previous video that I have done pops up. All right, guys, until next time, have a great one. Happy crafting.